Good morning, students. Welcome to the online classes in physics for standard tenth. Light, the most wonderful gift that we in our body possess is that of vision. We are able to see the waves in water, the moon, the distant stars. ourselves we are able to see in the mirror so what are the basic phenomena that enables our eye to see things we can see ourselves in a mirror so light from our body falls onto the mirror or some other reflecting surface and bounces back bounces back and this reflected light we are able to see sometimes through a glass window pane we are able to see through it light is able to pass through that particular uh, window pane we are able to see the rainbow the beautiful colors so we can see the dispersion of light into seven components when the white light passes through a small drop of water all these things you will be able to understand deeper after having a discussion on this particular chapter of a standard tenth although there are many phenomena pertaining to light but we will be confining our discussion to two important phenomena one is reflection of light other one is refraction of light and then in higher classes we will talk about interference diffraction polarization and some other important uh, behavior wave aspects of the light So to begin with, let us start with something which you already know: uh, the famous laws of reflection of light. Two important laws are there: that the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal. You already know this, and the incident, the reflected rays, and the normal at the point of incidence lie in the same plane. So suppose we have a plane reflecting surface. Now, a plane reflecting surface. can be anything it should be polished a good reflector well polished reflecting surface which is smooth will act as a plane mirror so you can uh, imagine in your mind suppose this is a plane mirror i'll call it as a reflector at some point if you draw a perpendicular then this line we call it as normal now if you draw some ray of light incident at this point that ray we will call it as incident light incident ray of light this light ray we know it bounces off the reflecting surface but there is a rule it will bounce predominantly in a particular direction only it cannot bounce anywhere and this reflected ray will also make some angle with the normal those angles will denote by r and i i is the angle made by incident ray with the normal so i we call as angle of incidence r is the angle made by the reflected ray with the normal so both these angles are measured from the normal okay so r is angle of reflection then the first law says at angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal this is the first law over here as you have seen the second law says that this incident ray of light this reflected ray of light and this normal at the point of incidence they lie in the same plane same plane means suppose this is the plane of board on the plane of board i have drawn <laughs> these three lines <coughs> this reflected light cannot point in this direction 
it cannot leave the surface of the board because the normal and the incident ray they are drawn in the plane of board so they will lie in the same plane that plane can be vertical that plane can be horizontal depending upon the situation okay so this is what you already knew uh, the first thing that i would like to uh, stress upon here is normal incidence normal incidence an important concept which will which will be needed time and again normal incidence normal incidence is the case when a ray of light is incident along the normal to the reflecting surface first this word normal you must understand it properly suppose i have some surface like so this is a surface now this is the surface which is plane normal to this surface will be a line like so so let me represent it by this particular stick now this is the normal it will be perpendicular to a line on this plane suppose on this plane i draw a line like so then this line which lies on this plane will be perpendicular to the normal and this normal this line can be drawn anywhere i can draw it like so i can draw it like so i can draw it like so any where you can draw a line all those lines which lie on the plane must be perpendicular to this particular line then this line will be called as normal to the surface okay so you can uh, check it out for yourself at your home you can take your notebook you can draw many lines on the page and then you can uh, make a pencil or a pen a point in this direction so that you will see carefully you will find this pen or pencil or this tube will make an angle of 90 degree to all those lines then we say that is the normal and all those lines which we have drawn on to this plane these lines they are tangential they are tangents you can say tangential okay so tangential means lying on the surface along the surface normal means perpendicular to the surface now these two terms you should remember so normal incidence suppose we have a plane reflecting surface and suppose this is the normal so if a ray of light is incident along this normal like so then what is the angle of incidence in this case the angle of incidence becomes 0 degree see this is 90 degree but what is our angle of incidence our angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal this is the incident ray and this is the normal both incident ray and normal are pointing in the same direction so this angle is not angle of incidence this is the angle between incident ray and plane of mirror angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal so i is 0 degree from laws of reflection what will be r r will also be 0 degree what does that mean see this is angle of reflection so r is 0 degree means this re reflected light will be very close in fact will lie exactly on the normal so r is 0 degree means the reflected light will be like so so during normal incidence i and r angle of incidence and angle of reflection both are 0 degree so what does that mean that means that the incident ray of light retraces back its path so all the normal incidence the incident ray of light after a reflection or on reflection retraces back along its own path so that is the meaning of normal incidence the next important thing which i would like to stress upon 
is the fact whether the laws of reflection are they valid for only plane surface or they are valid for curved surfaces also instead of a plane mirror suppose i have a curved surface like so this is also a reflecting surface here will the laws of reflection hold true so are the two laws of reflection valid for curved or irregular it need not be smooth curve also irregular reflecting surfaces and the answer to this question if you are thinking no then i'm sorry the answer to this question is a big yes the laws of reflection are valid for any kind of surfaces whether it is smooth rough it is a uh, round it is oval it is a uh, uh, hyperboloid whatever shape you might have the laws of reflection will always be holding true see suppose we have a plane reflecting surface like so we have a smooth curved reflecting surface like so this is this is concave this is what we call as concave mirror then we have a convex you already have the idea of concave and convex in your previous classes you have learned this suppose there is some curved surface like this one like a bowl you must be having but this surface this one the inner one that is concave and this outer bulging out portion that is convex so this is convex and this one is concave surface and we can have some irregular reflecting surface this is irregular a uh, reflecting surface or a reflector this is a plane reflecting surface okay now in these four cases i wish to communicate to you strongly that in all these cases the laws of reflection hold true this case we have already seen see this is the normal this is the uh, incident ray this is the reflected ray the angle of incidence and angle of reflection are equal the same will be true in this case of concave mirror also suppose i take a point over here not necessarily at the center suppose i take a point over here first thing you should choose the normal so normal will be almost perpendicular to this small segment of length around that point the best way to draw a normal is to first understand the concept of tangent i will take that topic separately here to draw the normal is to draw perpendicular to a very small line segment around that point so around that point if you mark this as the line segment then normal to that so this will be our normal let us first draw the normals here suppose i choose this point then this is the normal here let me choose two points one here and one here here this will be the normal and here this will be the normal at a given point first thing that you should understand carefully is how to draw the normal once your normal is decided you draw an incident ray you draw the reflected ray as per the laws of reflection so here you can see suppose i draw the incident ray like so let this be incident ray then this angle the angle between the incident ray and the normal will be angle of incidence then the angle of reflection should be equal to angle of incidence so whatever angle is this same angle on the other side you have to mark and then that ray will be the reflected ray and this angle is angle of reflection and here also we must have i is equal to r is it clear let's see in this case this is the normal this is not uh, vertical this is a bit tilted and let me draw this as the incident ray then this becomes the angle of incidence now if this is the angle of incidence 
same angle of reflection should be there and then we can easily obtain the reflected ray of light here we have two points because the surface is not smooth at different points you will have different normals here the normal is like so here normal will be like so here normal will be like so and so on always the normal will be perpendicular to the surface uh, all the tangents on the surface which you can draw uh, it will be perpendicular to that suppose this is the incident ray then this becomes the normal and this becomes the reflected ray at this point this is the normal so suppose this is angle of incidence then this will be angle of reflection and this will be the reflected light this is incident light this is reflected light and likewise you can draw at different points so this is a very important concept students i am not discussing here concave mirror convex mirror spherical mirrors just i am discussing the law of reflection it is a generalized law when we say it is law it is applicable for all kinds of surfaces it is right now applicable on this board also this board is not very smooth but it is applicable over this surface also the first thing that you should understand is how to draw the normal once you know choosing the normal in the proper direction then you can draw the angle of in, uh, incident and the reflected rays this concept of normal incidence which i discussed in case of plane mirror will also be true in this case for example suppose this is the concave mirror okay and at this point suppose this is the normal this is not looking like normal okay almost normal yes you can see this angle seems to be 90 degree if you have a ray of light as i have discussed in normal incidence incident along the normal see this was i if this is the incident ray this will be angle of incidence but if your incident ray is incident like so along the normal then the angle of incidence becomes how much 0 degree in this case i is equal to 0 degree and if angle of incidence is 0 angle of reflection will also be 0 so the ray will retreat back as we have discussed in case of normal incidence so this also does not hold true only for plane mirrors it holds true for all the cases so i would like you to draw yourself the figures corresponding to irregular reflectors and for convex surfaces draw a normal at any point as per your wish and along that normal drop an incident ray of light and retrace allow it to retrace back so there will be the incident and the reflected rays and angle of incidence and angle of reflection will be a zero uh, in such cases having understood this much let us now proceed further to discuss the image formation in case of plane mirror this is also known to you but we will discuss them briefly so image formation in plane mirror suppose this is a plane mirror i draw a line perpendicular to its surface so at this point this line is nothing but the normal suppose i choose a point point object there is an object i write it as o o for object i wish to know where will the image lie now what is the meaning of image what you see in the mirror is your image when you stand in front of a plane mirror you become the object and what you look into that particular mirror into that mirror your image is visible why do we get an image see image is obtained whenever rays of light after bouncing off from the mirror either meet actually at some point or appear to meet at some point correspondingly the images we call as real and virtual images let's see what happens in case of plane mirror 
don't bother much about these terms we'll discuss in details about real and virtual image for obtaining the image minimum two rays are needed so i will draw one ray like this and another ray like this so these are the incident ray from the object don't think only there are two rays actually when you put an object in front of a mirror from this object light falls at different points on the mirror if you wish you can draw five rays but i told minimum two rays must be drawn minimum so these two are the incident rays now the normal you know students at this point i told you this is the normal and at this point this is the normal normal is perpendicular to the surface so if this is incident ray this will be angle of incidence and same should be the angle of reflection and the reflected light will be like so so this is incident light this is reflected light here this is the incident light and what about the reflected is this normal incidence yes because the incident ray of light is exactly along the normal so you know after bouncing off it will retrace back its path like so so this is incident this is reflected this is incident this is reflected now these two reflected light rays they are diverging diverging means they are moving away and away and away so there is no question of meeting they will never meet since they do not meet actually the image which you see on the uh, mirror in the mirror is not a real image but if we produce them backward this ray of light you can see if we produce them backward like so and if this reflected light you also produce it backward like so they will appear to meet at some point appear to meet at some point so let me produce it backward so they appear to meet at this point and this point we will call it as i i for image since the rays are not actually meeting but are being produced backward to meet at this point this kind of image we call it as virtual image virtual means which is not real real images because there is actually meet you can obtain on a screen in the next class i will show you how to obtain real images using uh, spherical mirrors in plane mirror you cannot obtain real image uh, usually so the image which you see is virtual image the first property is that the image is virtual second property easily i leave it to you to prove that these two small triangles are congruent you can see these two angles are 90 degree now this ray has been produced backward this line is parallel to this line so this angle is equal to this angle suppose this angle is th uh, x then this angle will also be x angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so this is x these two lines are parallel if this is x this will also be x so what we have got these two angles are also equal so these two angles are 90 degree each these two angles are also equal and this line is common in both the triangles the angle angle side you used to read these things in mathematics these two triangles become congruent if these two triangles are congruent let me write this point as uh, p so i can write o to p or in fact i should write p to o this distance is equal to p to i p is the point on the mirror po is equal to pi that means distance of object from the mirror is equal to distance of image from the mirror so in other words we write the image is formed behind the mirror as far as the object is in front of mirror so image distance is equal to object distance not only this 
instead of point sized object if i draw an extended object like so i leave this figure for you to draw from here from the tip you can draw the uh, obtain the images just as just as you have obtained the image of this point over here this point its image will be somewhere here this point its image will be here this point its image we have already shown here so if this is an extended object this will be an extended image we will find again you can uh, easily prove it that these two sizes the triangles will be congruent again are equal so the size of object and size of image so object size is equal to image size which is what you observe in case of plane mirrors when you stand in front of plane mirrors your height appears to be same as the height of the image not only that when you stand in front of the mirror what you observe actually your right side appears to be left please observe carefully standing in front of a mirror your right ear will appear to be the left one so we say the image in case of plane mirror is laterally inverted your left appears to be right and your right appears to be the left this property is referred to as lateral inverses uh, lateral inversion in vertical direction inversion doesn't take place your head remains at the top so vertical inversion does not take place but lateral inversion does take place in case of reflection through plane mirrors okay so these are the properties of images formed by plane mirrors so these things are already known to you already you have read these things but still it's better to start from basics i would like you to draw these uh, ray diagrams that will help you build up your concepts from the very beginning okay having understood them now we are in a position to go over to spherical mirrors and that is the main uh, purpose of this particular chapter in your textbook <coughs> is very complex you know what is a sphere if that sphere is made up of a material which is quite reflecting and if you cut a portion of it then that portion uh, looks like a spherical mirror now depending upon which side is polished it may be called as a concave mirror or a convex mirror suppose this is imagine this to be a sphere this is not complete sphere but at least we can assume it to be a part of the sphere now if you see carefully i uh, i think you can see some reflection in this particular surface so it is not highly polished but still it can be considered as a reflector now this reflector is not a plane surface it is convex surface so this kind of mirrors or reflectors we will call as convex mirrors okay and if you see this part this is not a very good reflector because it is, has not been polished very fine so you are not you might not be able to see anything uh other than a reflection of some light if any i am not very sure whether you will see it or not but if this x has a reflecting surface good reflecting surface we will call it as a concave mirror so this is convex mirror this is concave mirror before we discuss in detail these mirrors as i told you in the beginning we would devote some time discussing about tangent and normal it is important to discuss this i will start from two dimensional object which is no circle center of the circle any point on the circle you take join the center of the circle to that point this is radius draw a line perpendicular to this radius you know that line is called as tangent so this is tangent
this line i am talking about line not this line segment this line line means i can produce it further which is perpendicular to the tangent is called as normal so always remember normal and tangent they are always perpendicular to each other normal is perpendicular to tangent if you understand why i introduced this in this fashion because you have some idea in mathematics you have read about tangent so a line which is perpendicular to tangent passing through that point at which tangent is drawn that is called as normal see this line is also perpendicular to tangent but this line is should not call as call as normal at this point the tangent was drawn not at this point but at this point at that point if you draw a line which is perpendicular to this tangent that line will be called as normal in case of circle so this is a circle center o the normal passes through center passes through center o so a very important clue from here you can get that on a circle any point you choose we have taken this point let me take another point here the tangent will be like so and if i draw a line perpendicular to this tangent that line will pass through center of the circle this line is also normal so it is normal at this point so for a circle at any point if you draw a normal that normal will pass through center normal will always pass through center so you can write that in bold letters in your notebook in a circle normal passes through center normal through any point same thing we can extend from two dimensions to three dimensions instead of circle now we will have a sphere in case of a sphere also same thing at any point on the sphere if you wish to draw a normal simply draw a line passing through center of that sphere so this is normal and this one will be the tangent why i discuss this concept because uh, the rule number 2 which says the incident ray the normal at the point of incidence so you should understand what is the meaning of normal in this chapter we have to read about spherical mirrors that means concave and convex mirrors for concave and convex mirrors at any point on the mirrors the first thing that we should draw is the normal and how will we draw the normal normal will be drawn by joining that point on the sphere with center of the uh, spherical part of which the mirror is a part okay so suppose let me draw a concave mirror here so you understand this is a concave mirror you must be knowing this is this point the center is called as pole pole we represent as p and this is normal so see if you complete this you will get a sphere this is the center that center we denote by c so this concave mirror is a part of the complete sphere it has been cut from this sphere we have cut out a small portion and we have polished it and we have polished it uh, on the uh, rear side piche usko polish kiya hua hai on on the inner side it is reflecting the uh, light so it behaves like a concave mirror for this concave mirror there must be some center so if you complete this sphere it has some center so this point c we call as center of curvature now these are some terminologies which also you know c is called as center of curvature p we call as pole and this line we call it as principal axis principal axis now suppose i choose one point over here and at that point i wish to draw normal so as per this discussion what we should do this point where is the center of this sphere here if i join this point to the center then the line which i get 
दैट लाइन इज नथिंग बट द नॉर्मल एम आई क्लियर स्टूडेंट इफ आई टेक अ पॉइंट ओवर हियर देन दिस लाइन विल बी द नॉर्मल इफ आई चूज दिस पॉइंट देन दिस लाइन इट सेल्फ इज द नॉर्मल सो प्रिंसिपल एक्सिस इज ऑल्सो वन नॉर्मल विच नॉर्मल दैट नॉर्मल विच पासिस थ्रू द पोल ऑफ मिरर सो इट इज अ नॉर्मल थ्रू पोल ऑफ द मिरर so principal axis is a line which is normal to the concave mirror passing through its pole is this clear if now we'll talk about principal focus principal focus which we denote by capital f So, in case of concave mirror, we are discussing convex mirror. We shall discuss separately. So, in case of concave mirror, if we draw a line parallel to the principal axis, incident at some point, then after a reflection, it passes through a special point on the principal axis. That special point is called as principal focus. See, suppose this be the incident light. this light ray is parallel to the principal axis after a reflection it passes through a point that point we call as principal focus so what will be the definition a ray of light incident parallel to principal axis of concave mirror after the reflection passes through a point on the principal axis this point passes through a point if you wish you can name it as f so this point is called as principal focus which we usually denote by capital f the distance of principal focus from the pole of the mirror this distance this one is denoted by small f and small f is called as focal length okay likewise the distance of the center of curvature from the pole that distance is denoted by r and r is called as radius of curvature so all these terminologies you must keep in your mind what is the meaning of pole what is the meaning of principal axis what is the meaning of principal focus what is the meaning of center of curvature and so on so today i'll end up with one important relation between f and r the relation between them is this f is equal to r by 2 the focal length for a concave mirror is half the value of its radius of curvature now to prove that i'll draw that figure again so this is our concave mirror i'll draw it a bit big this is our principal axis this is the pole this is the principal axis i'll choose one point over here Now, if you complete this sphere, there will be some center. That center is known as point that we call as center of curvature. Now, if you draw a ray of light parallel to the principal axis, we have discussed it passes through a point on the principal axis. That point we call as focus. Now, this distance P F is focal length. So this is F, and this distance. is r radius of curvature this is radius of curvature this is focal length we will prove that f is equal to r by 2 so let us first of all draw the normal so you know at this point how do we draw the normal by joining that point to the center of this sphere this is spherical part where is it center c so this should be joined so this becomes the normal this is incident ray normal this is reflected light 
or a ray so this is angle of incidence and this is angle of reflection you know that angle and uh, angle of incidence and angle of reflection must be same let the angle of incidence be x then the angle of reflection will also be x now you see these two lines they are parallel we have already discussed this ray of light is incident parallel to the principal axis so these two angles must be same if this is x this will be x also these two lines are parallel this is transversal so this total angle must be equal to this angle you know this these two angles is to be equal so this angle will be equal to this total angle what will be this total angle x plus x that is 2x let me call this point as m now let's quickly see in this triangle mpc now i am saying triangle this m to p this line i am taking at as a straight line this will be true in cases of mirrors which have a small aperture what is aperture this diameter of the mirror that is called as aperture so mirror surface will be like so so this will look like a circle to you radius of this circle diameter of that circle will be called as aperture for small apertures these points are very very close to the pole if they are very close they will almost like a straight line so we can take them as a triangle so tan of x in triangle mpc triangle mpc and another triangle will take m fp mpc triangle in this triangle tan x you know tan theta is perpendicular by base base is pc and in this triangle mfp tan to x tan of this angle is pm perpendicular by base base is pf okay now for a small aperture of the concave mirror one important result we are going to use uh, please accept it as a result uh, for a small angle what are the angles here x and 2x for a small aperture mirrors the angles x and 2x are very small so for small angles now what i am going to write uh, might not be known to you but uh, you just accept it as a result that tan of some angle if that angle is very small is nearly equal to x likewise we can write tan 2x is nearly equal to 2x please accept it as a result you will learn in higher classes but you can have some basics using geometry you can draw a triangle you make the angle very small that way you can understand it yourself so you put tan x is equal to x so x becomes equal to in this triangle uh, in this equation pm upon pc and from here tan 2x i'll write as 2x so 2x becomes pm upon pf now this two we combine so this implies 2x instead of x i'll put this value pm upon pc is equal to this one pm upon pf so pm will cancel pc will go that side and pf will come this side to pf what is pc p to c is nothing but r and what is pf p to f is nothing but small f so we have got r is equal to 2f and this will give us the result f is equal to r by 2 so this is very important derivation please practice this derivation at home students today i will stop here today we discussed some introductory ideas regarding image formation in case of plane mirror we understood the meaning of tangents and normal we stressed upon the fact how to draw normals from any point given on a spherical surface and then we discussed this particular derivation why do we say the focal length f for concave mirror should be half the radius of curvature so i'll come up with some more ideas with uh, related to the chapter of light in the next class students 
where we shall discuss about image formation in case of curved or spherical mirrors so till then take care read well thank you